imagine uh, you're a hospital and you've never heard of us. And you have some person talking to you about working with kids with cancer with karate. They look at you like you are nuts. For anyone who's had cancer or had a family member go through it, you know all too well just how real that fear, stress, and pain really is. If you consider yourself a true martial artist, then stick with us for a few minutes on this one because while unconventional, karate can actually be an effective tool for patients. That's why we're very happy to support the Hero Circle, Kids Kicking Cancer. They are a nonprofit organization that provides evidence-based martial arts therapy to children with cancer and other life-threatening conditions. It was founded in 1999 by Rabbi Elimelech Goldberg after losing his two-year-old daughter to leukemia. A martial artist and black belt himself, Rabbi Goldberg began offering support to other children battling the deadly disease. The training is led by Richard Plowden, who has had a substantial career as a top tournament fighter, was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame and named Instructor of the Year by Black Belt Magazine, and he serves as the Chief Martial Arts Therapist. Mr. Plowden is with us today to give us a personal inside look at this very special program. What exactly is Hero Circle presented by Kids Kicking Cancer, and how did it get started? 22 years ago, um, a rabbi, uh, we call him Rabbi G, his name is Elimelech Goldberg. He um, started Kids Kicking Cancer out of Children's Hospital of Michigan. The first couple of years, um, it was just oncology patients that the organization worked with, but oncology patients and hematology patients, patients that may have sickle cell or other blood disorders, oftentimes they're treated in the same clinic. So there were kids um, who were hematology patients and, and other illnesses who say, well, wow, if the cancer kids can have this program, how come we can't? So then we started uh, working with kids with other illnesses. And with that came the uh, the organization being named Kids Kicking Cancer, but Kids Without Cancer, where we, we were servicing. So many of them misunderstood. They thought they had cancer and their parents may not tell them and that type of thing. So um, Rabbi G came up with the term hero circle to include all of the different illnesses and the fact that they inspire each other. So the kids with sickle cell, they inspire our hematology kids, who inspire our sickle cell kids, who inspire our organ transplant kids. And we, we work with any kids who are in pain with illness and their siblings all over the world. It's the kids kicking cancer hero circle. What is the primary goal of the program and how are the kids um, expected to use material that they learn? It's an empowerment program using the, um, the carrot of martial arts, let's say. We like to say that the martial arts is the metaphor. So there's no sparring that takes place. There's no board breaking. There's no self-defense. We do teach blocks. We teach some kicks. We'll teach some strikes. And there are some kids who even do forms of kata, depending on how long they've been with us. But our goal is to infuse in them that they are powerful martial artists and they can fight whatever comes their way. We like to say that in the movies, the martial artists are the only people who beat up the bad guys. So right away, when we walk into a clinic or a hospital room with our uniform on and we're being positive and really trying to inspire the kids, they latch on to us and they buy into what it is that we do. So we have um, kids who use our breathing techniques and meditation, which is really the crux of our program, happens to be our therapeutic interventions. So we have um, kids who will use that while they're going through a procedure, having a port access, might be something as simple as getting a shot. And you know, a lot of adults are fearful of shots, let alone, you know, a five or six year old kid. So they're getting the shot and they begin to do what we call their power breathing or go into a meditative state. The doctors are amazed. So it's been very effective for pain management, you would say? Oh, no no doubt about it. That That's really um, a huge part of what it is that we do is pain management. There are numerous studies confirming that cancer patients with strong emotional support show higher recovery rates. I have also included a link in the description to the National Library of Medicine that published a study on the effectiveness of this exact program. And they concluded that children with this therapy experience a significant reduction in pain and emotional distress. Hero Circle is supported by fundraisers and donations, and you can give through their website or via the donate button that's next to this video, and they will receive 100% of the contributions. If you can't financially commit, then please share this with everyone you can. The therapy is free, and by making families aware of it, you now have the power to give their child an extra tool to fight with. Tell us about power, peace, and purpose. 
Well, power, peace, purpose happens to be one of our mantras. And we say that when we bow, you know, because all martial arts systems will most have some type of bow that they do. Uh, Rabbi G in creating the Kids Can Get to Hero Circle came up with a bow where with the right hand we say power, we cover power with peace, and then we bow and say purpose. We do that because we tell the kids, boom, you're now a powerful martial artist. You can fight whatever is coming your way. We tell them that we say peace because we also give them the ability to take control and calm themselves down. And then all of our children will tell you when we ask them what's your purpose, they'll say to teach the world. Because one thing um, that takes place, Daniel, all of us, right? We want to know what, what is our purpose? So we tell these young warriors who are going through the fights of their lives many times that their purpose is to be a teacher, to be a role model to have adults who might complain about stubbing their toe, look at this kid who's going through chemo treatment and go, wow, if they can do it, I can do it. So the kids really take ownership of that. We do demonstrations um, with corporations and other public groups, and they help to inspire adults with our mantra, Power, Peace, Purpose. That is fantastic. And in watching some of the videos you have online, I noticed that um, a lot of the kids are repeating the phrase that they say, breathe in the light and breathe out the dark or push out the dark. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, we make an attempt to make things tangible, right? So when we ask them to breathe in the light, of course, initially, some will point to a light bulb or the sun, or that's what they initially think we're talking about. But then we let them know, no. Light happens to be the good things that take place in your life. Strength, courage, love. And then you want to blow out the pain, the fear, the anger. So we'll go through sessions where we'll have kids who will identify what their light is and what their darkness is. And that's what we want them, that's what we want them to focus on. So you're making it relative to their own viewpoints. Oh, no, no doubt about it. Because they're, you know, each kid's journey is their own. And, you know, I'm someone myself, uh, at my advanced age, thank God, I've never had to go through cancer treatment. So I can't talk to them from that standpoint, although one of our lead instructors, uh, Michael Hunt, was part of the very first Kids Kicking Cancer class 22 years ago at um, Children's Hospital in Michigan. He's now one of our lead instructors, and he can speak to the kids and parents from that personal experience, which has really helped enhance our our, our um program as well because a lot of times you know people will tell you you don't know what i'm going through you know you, you you don't know you don't understand and michael will smile and then begin to tell his story what a powerful figurehead just to have in place so the kids could actually see someone who went through it and used it and actually got through the and fought the battle themselves yes sir especially someone um as he tells his story um long story short he had some ribs removed as a child and um, because of the cancer, they replaced the ribs with a piece of plastic. And his mom said, well, as he gets older and has, as he grows up, you know, what's going to happen with that piece of plastic? His body's going to grow, but the plastic won't grow. And the doctors told her that he, he's not going to survive. And here we are. Now he's in his 30s and he's thriving. Thank God. Well, is there an age eligibility, like a cutoff or restriction for any of the students? Well, initially when it was started, um, I think Rabbi G thought that the the program kids would age out about 18 or that type of thing. But what, what happened is um, we become a support group. We have individuals who are in their 20s who still interact with us, um, you know, post-treatment. So it really is a lifelong commitment. Yeah, oh, it is. It is. And, you know, it's a, life is about relationships anyway. You know, so when you find some place where you feel comfortable, and that's one thing that and talking to a number of our young people um, and parents with, with our organization, they, there's a sense of normalcy, right? We don't treat them any different. You know, um, we, 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 we have kids, Daniel, that uh, have gone through cancer treatment and been told by, by parents of kids in school that the cancer is, is contagious. So you can't hang out with that person because they can, they, you might catch it. So, you know, imagine what that does to a young person in elementary school to hear some nonsense like that. And, and they, they know better, but they're being excluded. But that's where that training can come back in. So you got, you're teaching them how to, how to manage and cope with the, not just the pain, but now when they're dealing with scrutiny or anything else, social-wise, they can apply that training to that as well. That is 
That's exactly it. You get it. And um, how are classes held? Um, well, we have a few different ways that we interact with the individuals uh, and COVID has changed a lot, I must say too. Um, one, we do clinic visits. Any uh, interactions that we have are approved by physician or hospital. So, you know, it's not like we're just willy nilly going in here and doing things. We have an eight hour uh, training program that we have individuals go through too, as we onboard them with us. And then they have to go through trainings with the individual's hospitals that we're involved in. So we'll go in for clinic visits and then we're also allowed to go bedside, you know, and see patients um, while they're in their room with the hospitals that have, that have approved us. Another way that we interact is now on Zoom, we do our classes. So Zoom, Zoom has increased our reach to whereas in the past we had to have uh, instructors with boots on the ground to physically be there for the kids. Now we have hospitals where they'll go with an iPad room to room, the uh, child life specialist and or the nurse and, and have the kid on camera while I'm here in Detroit working with them as far as breathing goes, might show them a block, a couple of punches, and then get inside their head with inspirational messages. So even the kids who can't physically get up and perform the moves, they're still included because you were talking about doing bedside, so everyone's included. Everyone's included. And I'll tell you, Daniel, I have one class that takes place out of New Jersey. 100% of the kids are in a wheelchair. 100%. We have to be able to make adjustments. So if we have one physical class where a kid is in a wheelchair, um, one in-person class, kids in the wheelchair, we're not kicking that day. We, we, we sat back and we customized the class to the group that we have so that everybody feels included. So is there a cost to the families for this or how, how do people actually sign up for this program? They're recommended from by their physicians, the child life specialists, um, the nurses, and or online, a number of parents have found this. So the parent then gets the physician to sign off on joining our program and it um, it takes off from there. And there's no cost to the patients to be part oh, of it. Oh, no, 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 no. Every Everything is free. Here in Detroit, which is our hub, which is where we started. So here, we have three vans that we run for classes. Where we go and pick up kids from home and bring them physically to classes. So, but everything, everything is free. We operate on grants, donations, that type of thing, fundraisers. You know, we've had a number of martial arts schools um, do kickathons for us and that type of thing. Excellent. So donations would go to the transportation costs, the equipment, the gear, the uniforms. The all uniform. That. that that is correct. Um, we order through Century. We have a partnership with Century, and they give us a pretty good deal deal on that. You know, imagine the type of insurance we have to carry too. <laughs> you know, and 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 every I is dotted, every T is crossed with us. What is the most impactful way any viewers can actually contact you guys and contribute to the cause? For sure, um, for sure contributing, and we are a 501c3, we are a nonprofit organization. So it's always, it's always a struggle, so to speak. So if the martial arts community, and that's what we've been working on with Century on, can embrace us with uh, fundraising and also potential instructors. The challenge with the instructors become is, so many of us are in a box and we teach the way that we were taught. So getting away from that hardcore, um, sparring, super rough impact type thing and understanding that these are young people who have challenges and we have to soften things. We have to come down to their level so that they can embrace the beauty of martial arts, which is really a holistic activity. That brings up the question is, um, can any martial artist from, from different styles of arts contribute? Um, or like, what, what's the actual material that you guys teach? Daniel, you are so sharp. Well, because everything that we do revolves around basics, we're very adaptable. One of my best instructors out of the Chicago area um, happens to be a judo practitioner. Now stop and think about that. But, but we've been able to work with him as far as blocks, punches, just the basics, so that he can teach it to the kids and then still get inside of people. And that's that, That's the key. We're not trying to make somebody kick like Bill Superfoot Wallace. 
We're not trying to make them as tough as Benny or Kitties. You know, we're, we're setting back and trying to make them be the best human being that they can be while they're fighting such a rough thing. So there is a basic set curriculum that's basically universal, if you want to call it that. Yes, sir. That's correct. I, um, I'm heavily involved in tournament competition. I was um, part of the very first sponsored karate team in the United States, the Budweiser team. And Grandmaster Parker was our advisor. So I, I was blessed enough to interact with him. Now, I don't compete myself anymore, but um, over the years, I had a very, 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 very good tournament career to the point now where my son and daughter, uh, Morgan Plowden and Richard Avery Plowden, are two of the top competitors um, in the world right now from a tournament standpoint. So I tell people, if I can make that kind of switch and turn it off, you know, I have my sparring class in a couple of hours here. But if I can make that kind of switch, anybody can. Because, you know, I, I come from a very, very structured tournament background, but kids kicking cancer changed my life. What kind of feedback have you received from families and patients that are in the program? Oh my gosh. Well, understand Dan, this will be 18 years, I think, of me doing this. So, you know, the the, the, the feedback has been one, quite emotional to be honest with you, and um, also quite uplifting because you, you you know you made a difference. In 18 years, I have to say, we, we've lost some kids, you know? And um, I tell the story as one of them, young man named Tony, who um, relapsed, brain cancer. And um, I walked, he, he, he wasn't doing well, but I walked into his hospital room one day and he perked up and just started smiling. I said, oh, Tony, well, why are you smiling? He said, because I knew you'd be here. You know, and just having a young, a teenager, and, and he eventually passed, unfortunately, but ha hearing that from him just gives you such a rush, you know, because you know that um, you're, you're, you're looking out for him. Kids can sense your sincerity. And what are the goals for the future of the program? Uh, well, we're working right now on uh, seeing how we expand. You know, as I said, we started here in Detroit. And when I was hired 18 years ago, we also had New York. It was Detroit, New York. And now, now over the years, you know, I, I was blessed enough a couple of years ago to go to South Africa to help set up our program there. You know, so wherever there are ill kids, we want to be able to service them as long as, of course, we can stay ahead of the game financially. But again, what Zoom has done is cut down on a lot of those costs because to do a class in Dallas, Texas, I don't have to have the instructor there now. So, you know, it, it's, it's, man, again, for me, it's been life altering. I thought that I was going to own a few schools, a franchise it out. Um, I had my tournament organization and all of that got it got put second. You found the real martial arts. Oh, I did. I did find a calling. So if viewers were to walk away with just one idea about your program, what would you like that idea to be? That the martial arts is a wonderful activity that can literally change lives without breaking bones. Sorry. Right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. No, no, no. Th thank you. Thank you for reaching out to... Uh, share with the world what we do for our kids because we it's needed thank you so most of us will spend the majority of our lives training to protect ourselves just in case we have to for these kids that struggle exists every single day and if you really want to make a difference to the martial arts then here is an opportunity to do so every single one of us watching this has a way to help even if it's simply to spread the awareness you can make a donation to their website or via the donate button next to this video if you have a school and would like to organize a fundraiser, you can reach out to them at the link in the description below. But if you know of anyone who is struggling with cancer or another disease, please reach out to them and tell them about this program. You never know what could push the odds in their favor. And that's the real power of the martial arts, making us as strong as we possibly can be. And if you believe that, you'll want to meet Ian McLeod, who was our guest on the show, and he showed us how he used karate to recover from a series of traumatic brain injuries and how that training has given him a functional life. The mental fortitude and power that can be attained through the martial arts is real if we can learn to embrace it.